Julie Rufner. I'm one of the new hosts of Polymer Clay TV. Each month I'll be showing you original techniques and reviewing products and tools that I like to use and that work well on polymer clay. So let's get right into today's project. This is the pendant that I'm going to show you how to make today. It uses white polymer clay and pastel chalks. Uh, so pastels or pastel chalks is what you want to look for. I use the sticks. Uh, we're going to start out with white polymer clay and I use Primo Sculpey but you can use any brand that you have on hand. The total amount that we're going to need today is a half of a cube of white. So I have sliced it into, using my slicer blade, just sliced it into four sections. And we're going to start with three sections. I've conditioned those through my clay conditioner machine or pasta machine. And then, so this is the three pieces together. So I'm going to take this and just flatten it out about the thickness of a pancake. Now you're not going to see my conditioning machine, it's off to the side, but I'm going to go ahead and run this through the conditioning machine at the third thickest setting. Okay, so you've got that there. Now, if you have any bubbles, go ahead and just pierce them with the corner of the slicing blade or any pieces of other colors you don't want in there. Because you don't want that, it's going to you know, foul you up later. So then I'm just going to fold this in half. So now we have two thicknesses um, on the number three setting, and it's about a quarter of an inch. So then what we're going to do is we are going to use a supply that used to be very common um, in craft stores, but now you can find them mostly online. It's a brass stencil, and this is used for paper embossing normally, but I like to use it on polymer clay. And just remember when you choose your design that the design is going to grow from the size that it is on your, your um, template. So I'm just going to go ahead and take some water and spritz the back of it just for as a release. Pick my clay up and lay that on the clay. And then again, I'm going to take this over to my pasta machine and I'm going to turn my pasta machine to a number two to leave room for that template to go through it. And I'm running them through together and you'll see that when I come out here. Okay, so now they've been run together through the pasta machine and you can slowly lift this off. And the cool thing is you're, what you're going to be left with is a raised design on the white clay. So here are, here's a sample of pastel chalk sticks. I like this set because you get, they're called half sticks and you get 64 colors instead of just, you know, the smaller amounts. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and pick up like this, maybe this dark turquoise blue. And the best way to get it to work for you is to take just a regular piece of paper and draw it out on the piece of paper because you're actually like applying the, the chalk dust to the piece of paper. Then use your index finger and just tap it tap off a tiny bit of excess one or two times and then start going over the raised area of the clay in a circle motion. Now, at this point, don't worry about getting the color in between the shapes. And if you get little pieces, little balls of white clay, just kind of push those off to the side like I just got. Keep a very soft touch. And you're gonna do this a couple times. Take your time with this because you really do wanna get the raised areas to a deep color. And so you can see already that the chalk is getting on the background, which is fine because we're actually going to fill the background in later. So I'm getting a few balls of clay, so I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to do a little bit more here. Get a little more chalk on there. And that's what you want. You want that deeper blue color so there's a nice contrast from the front to the back. Okay, almost done. A few more little balls of clay to get off of there. Kind of just pulls the little balls of clay off. They just become loose. By the way, we're going to achieve a nice ceramic look, if you couldn't tell with that pendant. We're kind of doing a faux ceramic technique here with this. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And actually, all I'm going to use is about that much of it. So we've got it pretty good there. Maybe just one more time for good measure. Okay, now there's one more thing I like to do before I run it through the pasta machine. I'm going to actually um, run this through and flatten it. Before I do, I'm just going to take my fingernail off. If you don't want to use your fingernail, you can use an X-Acto knife and I'm just going to scrape little pieces of the chalk dust onto this. And what that does is that just adds to the realism of the ceramic look. It might be hard for the camera to pick that up, but I'm just getting little tiny chalk dust, very dark blue, that's straight from the chalk, in between the designs that are on the flower. Okay, that looks good. Okay, you want to have a paper towel handy to kind of wipe your fingers. Um, when you're ready to clean your fingers, go ahead and use like a baby wipe. So now I'm going to just pick up this clay 
And again, my pasta machine's over to the side. I'm going to run it through again at the third thickest setting. So I'm going to turn that from number two to number three on mine. I'm going to run that through. Now remember, every time you run your clay through your pasta machine, clay is going to pick up on the roller. So you're going to want to clean that just with a dry paper towel in between. Okay, then I want you to check it. And I still feel a little bit of raised area. So I'm going to go ahead and go to number four. Run that through again, because you really do want a nice flat surface on the clay. Okay. Now, that doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but it's even going to stretch more when we do this next step. So now what I want you to do is just about at the top of the flower, cut that and back that chalked piece with the white that you've just cut off. And you're not going to use really any more than this area here. So I'm going to trim all the way around it. And I'm trimming loosely. I'm not trying to cut out the shape right now. So then this is what you have so far. At this point, I just uh, gathered up my scraps. And actually, as I'm looking at my piece of clay here, I think I'm going to trim the side edges off just a little bit more. There we go. I just want to see just that pattern. So I'm just going to bunch my scraps up. It doesn't matter. This will turn just a little bit light blue. The chalk can tint the white clay. Roll that into a ball. You want to start with a smooth ball if you're new before you roll things through the pasta machine. Flatten it again. And I'm going to bring this over and roll this through now at the number one setting, which is the thickest setting of my pasta or conditioning machine. Perfect. Okay. So now you're going to lay this down on the second layer. And this time, because I want to leave it fairly thick, because I want my pendant to be fairly thick, I'm just going to use my acrylic roller tool. And I'm going to go over in one direction, pressing firmly. Wipe off the tool because, again, it got chalk on it like before, and go the other way. And then you want to kind of feel that to feel if it's even. I've got it a little smaller, so I'm going to go this way one more time. It's a little thinner on the part that's closest to you. There, that looks good. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So now you see how much that pattern has grown, and you've got the nice little uh, speckles in there. At this point, to fill in the background with the light blue, you're just going to take your finger and rub over the whole thing. Now, if you like that white, you can keep it that way. The design is a little more pronounced, but I kind of like to blend it because it just, to me, this looks a little bit more like a ceramic piece, especially when you get that high gloss glaze on there. Okay, now I like to bevel my edges when I cut my clay into the shape that's going to be for the pendant. So what I'm using here is just a piece of kitchen wrap. It's a saran wrap or a similar brand you can use. And I'm going to hold it and stretch it over the clay you notice I'm getting it real tight, and then I'm just going to burnish my fingers down on there so it really sticks. Now at this point, you don't want any wrinkles in the plastic because that will cause a wrinkle in your clay. Sliding everything. So I'm just going to go over that with my finger, make sure that there's no little cracks in the plastic. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and use my slicing blade, and I'm going to curve it a little bit, so I am using the flexible blade. Curve it, and I'm going to go right down through the plastic and onto my clay. And what that does is gives you a smoother beveled edge. Go on the side. Now this can be any shape that you want. I'm just going to give it four rounded corners because that's just the easiest with the blade. And it's a good starting place too if you're a beginner. Okay. And then lift it off and remove the excess clay. And voila! There you go. So then you will bake your clay piece in the oven. And this is the one that I've already actually baked. It's already hard. And um, it's nice and smooth, and the chalk actually seals, so it doesn't come off anymore. So you really don't have to seal this, but I like the real high gloss uh, look for the ceramic look. So now, to make this into a pendant, you could glue a pin on this after we would do the gold edges, but I'm going to make this one into a pendant. I'm going to show you how to make a tube bale. So I'm going to take, this was rolled on the number one setting. I'm going to fold it so it's twice as thick. And you use just half of the oval shape, okay, like that, and cut it a little smaller. Make sure I have the right edge there. Okay. Then I'm going to use my purl and etch tool. You can use something similar, like a skewer. And I'm going to make a hole through this, and this is actually going to be where the chain's going to go through. And my chain is very thick, so I'm going all the way down to the end of my purl and etch tool. So I have a quite large hole, and I'm actually going to push it together this way to give it a little bit more thickness on it. Now this is kind of something you're going to just have to kind of work with. 
you know, look at the size of your chain that you're going to use, just kind of pinching that, and decide how big you want your tube bail. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go about there, and I want it a little flatter. You don't want it too bulky on the back of your pendant, so I'm going to flatten that out a little bit. And then what I like to do at this point is trim the ends so they look a little nicer. I'm going to trim them going out at an angle. Might be hard to see, but there we go. There's one end and the other end. Okay. So then, I'm going to use my um, blade to get this off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just twist my purl and etch tool, take that out, and I'm going to bake this separately. So once you have that baked, bring this over, um, just set it aside for now, and I want to add some edging. If you notice the pendant in the beginning, we have some gold edging on this, and this is gold leaf. So I'm going to show you how I did that. If you're not familiar with gold leaf, it's these sheets that come, they're very thin. They're like less than, thinner than a piece of paper. And we're gonna use gold today, so that's what the gold leaf looks like. And that might be enough. What I like to use, there's two things. Now, most of you would use the gold leaf before you baked your clay. I have found a way to use it after you've baked your clay, and I really like this because you get a nice solid coverage. So first you wanna shake this pen a little bit. And it's got one of those felt tip ends on it. So you want to press it down. Oh, see that flies away, it's very thin. You want to press it down until the glue starts to come out. And this is actually leafing glue. It's called an adhesive pen, and this one's by Mona Lisa. So I'm just going to keep pressing it down until the glue comes to the tip. And it does dry in the tip, so it takes a couple times. There it is. You can just see it wet. And then I'm just basically going to go around the edge. So I'm just letting it lay right on the edge, turning my piece. And then check, make sure you're still getting liquid coming out of there, because that does want to dry up easily. Okay, got a little bit more on there. Just rest it against the edge so it shows a little bit on the front and a little bit on the side edge of your pendant. Okay, once you've got that all the way around, you're going to need to let that dry. Okay, so my glue has dried for about 20 minutes. And the thing that you want to be aware of is that it remains sticky. See how that's picking that up? If you let it dry until it's not sticky, you're going to be waiting a very long time. <laughs> so it's going to dry and keep its stickiness. And that way you can just take the foil and take a very soft paintbrush, lay it down over it. And this is kind of fun because it wants to go everywhere. But you're going to pounce down on the pendant. And don't worry, that's going to come off. The places that you want it to stick is going to stick and then you can rub the rest off. So it's kind of a mess for a while, and then you're gonna see what it's really supposed to look like. So I'm gonna go all around there, pick up another piece here, and kind of set it, you can kind of place it, you know, deliberately in different spots that need it. And you can go over it too. If you find there's a spot that's, you know, does not have any gold leaf on it, pick it up and just kind of press it down over it. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of push a little firmer all the way around. Okay, get some of that out of the way so you can see this. And then I just take my brush and I use a circle motion. That did pretty well. And this is so nice because normally if you've worked with the gold leaf, you know that when you put it on the raw clay, whenever you move that clay, it cracks the gold leaf. This gives you a nice solid coverage. And let's see if I can just kind of move that out of the way a little bit. Okay. And then you can just try and take your fingers and burnish around it. And then like I said, if you see a spot that doesn't have the gold leaf, just go ahead and press it on the top and you get something like that. Okay, so now I've also baked my bale. This is my little tube bale. So at this point, I'm gonna turn the piece over and I would use like a strong glue um, that you normally would use on polymer clay, like an E6000 glue. And grab it here, comes in a tube like this. So next thing I would do, I'm not gonna show you, but you know, I would glue this on and it would be secured to the back there. Okay, now I wanna show you the back of my finished pendant here. I always like to finish the back. You've probably heard that more than once if you've worked with polymer clay for a while. But I like that the front has the gold leaf, so I thought, well, that would normally continue to the back. And so now you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. When I'm doing a large area, I wanted to mention, I don't use that adhesive pen. I use the liquid. And this is by Mona Lisa uh, Metal Leaf Adhesive Size. And they use this normally for frames, but it's fine on the clay. Um, you will have to seal over it, which is not a problem. So I would use a regular paintbrush for that, and I would coat the whole back, let it dry just like we did before, and then just put your foil on, and you'll get a nice solid coverage there. So then, I'm going to show you the pendant again. 
that gets sticky on your hands. <laughs> so there's the finished pendant. Um, what I used for the glaze on this particular one, I wanted that real high sheen. So I used a two-part epoxy glue. I like Envirotex Light. And here is the just my bottles of it. What you do is you mix even parts of one and the other one in a small container. And I like to use just maybe a shallow plastic bowl. And you put the two parts in together, mix them up for as long as it says on the instructions. And then you go ahead and take that. And now you're going to want this flat. See how it's tilted? You're going to want that flat. I like to use these fast food trays. I've collected these over time. I find them usually at craft stores. Um, I put a piece of raw clay down here. And then I take my pendant. And of course this would be glued on the back. And that way it will level it out. Because you want that level. You just kind of get that level. And then go ahead and add your glue onto that. Just go just to the edge with the two-part epoxy glue. Get a nice coat of that and then allow that to dry. Basically, some people really say that it takes about three days to cure. So then that's going to be dry. And then you do want to seal the foil that's on the back of your pendant. So I just go ahead and use um, a regular polymer clay friendly glaze on the back. You don't need the high gloss glaze of the two-part epoxy. So um, I just seal that gold leaf and you've got a beautiful pendant. Well, I hope you enjoyed our first craft together and um, so come back next time and see more videos on Polymer Clay TV. Bye!